Avery Riders, thanks for joining me on board today at the uh, 2022 Yamaha MT-09 So this is a brand new bike, I'm taking it on demo on Motorcycle World in Northampton So yeah, got 6 miles on the clock so take it easy on the tyres and the first thing we need to do is go and fit up this is a comfortable place to be nice wire positions very very slightly bent forward the seat feels a little bit uh, on the firm side the mirrors um, I like the shape, but it's a bit uh, bulky. But uh, got good visibility. So coming to a stop is fine. This isn't a heavy bike. Uh, not sure the weight to hand. I've flashed it on the screen. A quick shifter. Um, feels nice and smooth so far. The only thing I'm finding is I'm being pushed forward as I'm riding. The, the seat feels a bit slidey, but I mean, I could be down to my jeans. So I'm not sure if you can see, but the screen is quite nice. All the info you need. Probably a little bit on the smaller side. Suspension so far feels firm but uh, comfortable so, so far the fuel in round town feels lovely so I'm expecting uh, big things from this engine obviously been a Triumph fan I'm a, I am a fan of uh, triple cylinders Uh, again, I don't have the stats to hand, but I'll flush up the power stats right now. Right, that's down. It's nice and easy to get your leg over. You were, missus. Right. Okay, so filling up. So the tank's nearly empty, I'm going to fill up because I'm going to be doing some, a fair few miles. Okay, so that took uh, 11 litres. The fuel light was flashing. Nice and easy to get a key out. Get your leg over. Yeah, no problem at all. The rear isn't uh, too high. A bit firm of a bump, so not uncomfortably so, but you are aware of it. Yeah, so in town this is proving a uh, nice place to be actually. A decent riding position. It feels like I'm, I'm sat reasonably high, but uh, still perfectly able to get my uh, feet flat on the floor. So yeah, I love your riding position. So um, might be a case of getting used to it, but I find the clutch is a little bit grabby. Yeah, it's quite docile in town really. Got, got no complaints. Like I said it's not a heavy bike. No, weight is all low down, so not top heavy or anything. Not gonna look mate. Uh, what do you want to do that for? So I'm in third gear at 30 miles an hour. That feels perfectly fine. I mean, obviously this is a brand new bike, but that, that uh, gearbox feels really sweet. Going up and down the gears. 
uh, so far the controls I've used feel nice um, they do I mean, uh, if I could direct one criticism at them they do look a bit plasticky and, but they feel nice when you're using them I have to say this is um, a bike I wasn't keen on the looks on in the pictures but in the flesh it looks better yeah that, that quick shifter oh that is fantastic yeah that quick shifter as smooth as you like so so far handling wise uh, yeah this is going around bends really well not taking any extreme corners yet but uh, yes she steers really sweetly in terms of comfort through the bars there's no no major vibrations so it all feels really smooth actually Fourth gear at 60 miles an hour. Yeah, she, she likes to be revved. So we're going to third gear at 50. That's better. <laughs> In terms of uh, wind blast, I mean, obviously, this is a naked bike, so you are going to get. Uh, you're at the mercy of the wind but uh, that, again same as on many of these bikes that little screen is doing a reasonable job of uh, keeping that wind off so we've got some dual carriageway work ahead as well so we'll give that a try <laughs> second gear 30 miles an hour <laughs> Power comes on about uh, 7,000 revs. <laughs> about 6,500 revs you can take off. Yeah, I think I could, I'm going to like this bike. Right, dual carriageway. Yeah, that quick shifter is so smooth, it's lovely. miles an hour and uh, in all honesty it's not actually that bad and I wouldn't want to uh, I wouldn't want to do 200 miles of motorway work in this but 100 would be okay when you predictably your shoulders are getting blasted but yeah, that screen is doing a good job of deflecting the wind just above my helmet yeah so as far as uh, naked bikes go yeah this is a good place to be at general carriageway try a little bit more high speed do a quick overtake. Yeah, this is this is all right. Huh? Tell you what, tucked down like this, this is absolutely fine. This is actually much better than I was expecting. Yep, this engine is beautiful. Like so silky smooth.
not really getting any vibrations through the through the bars or through the pegs. But yeah, this is going around the bends really nicely, even on these new tires. Horn test. <laughs> A bit Mickey Mouse. Okay, so on the dash. press your mode button you'll see I'm currently in mode 4 and that is the low power mode so the power is muted so look full throttle nothing it just feels like the clutch is slipping there you go yeah so really muted power delivery second gear nothing's happening so we're gonna stick it you have to have the throttle closer to do it. I think, he says. Possibly not. Yeah, so the throttle wants to be off to do it. So yeah, now we go into mode one. <laughs> there you go. Not so much difference, so now we're in the full, full fat sporty mode. Which is probably not very wise on this uh, disgusting back lane. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, you can feel the difference. This is one bike where you can really feel the difference in the power modes. There's a, there's a huge difference. So that would be, that would probably make this a, a good bike for a beginner, a beginner rider to be honest. Because if you're still building your confidence up, you can just stick it in that low power mode. Build your confidence up over, the, over a few months. Then uh, gradually increase the power. Yeah, this is uh, possibly the, the bike with the most noticeable different power modes I've ever ridden. It's a huge difference. So, side stand, I'll leave it in gear. Yeah, it's okay, there's a, there's a lug on it to catch it, you just need to remember where it is. Right. Let's do a little walk around with this uh, little puppy. Yeah, I think uh, just a little screen, like the bug eyed street triple. Um, I think they look horrific without a screen, but with a screen, they look really nice. This would be the same. Just a just a little fly, fly screen there. To, just to hide all them exposed bolts and uh, that would work really well so I'm pretty sure yeah my half one is, a, is an accessory yeah that would set that front end off nicely I quite like those uh, air scoots there they look pretty cool yeah this is it's a bike looks much better in the flesh than in the pictures yeah, there's a few I mean, for this for example, you've got the horn right on display just there. Just, just, it's like it just looks like it's been stuck on. So things like that could have been hidden. Um, I don't know if you could possibly re relocate it somewhere. Well, then again, I suppose there's nowhere else really for them to, to put it. But the horn there just looks like an afterthought. Um, but yeah, I mean that aside, I like that front end in the flesh with a screen on that would uh, bring it up nicely. I mean, maybe you could even get like a little fairing on it, I suppose, to hide the horn. Um, yeah, there's a few bits like uh, you can see like the um, black tape there and that, and things like that should be hidden away. Sorry, Yamaha. Uh -huh. um, it's not major, it's just I'm just clutching at straws. 
because apart from that, in the flesh, that, that front looks quite nice. Let's have a look at the lights. I'm not sure how much you can pick up on that, but uh, that's the uh, running lights. Moving on to the rear, they're doing a re really good job of hiding that exhaust. That looks really neat under there. What a catalyst, catalytic converter rather than. Well, I can't even. Can't even see the exit. Oh, yeah, it's underneath, and I can, don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it's underneath, so that's quite neat actually. I mean, if you maybe if you can get a, I don't know if they do a belly pan that will go under and hide it, and then, uh, but no, no, that looks alright, that's quite neat. That CP3 engine in all its glory, yeah. The, the engine is definitely the best feature about this bike. It is fantastic. Um, rear end is, uh, I like it's quite pretty. Obviously, you've got the tail tidy, but I mean, obviously, you need a tail tidy on there, get rid of that. But apart from that, it's quite neat. So, look at the indicators. And my uh, indicators are quite neat, I like them. Quite visible. I like the shape of that tank as well, and uh, it, uh, it's quite comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah, you can. Your your knees are well splayed. Uh, it's, it's quite supportive. Uh, standard tyres are Bridgestone Batarax Hyper Sport. So there's only there some adjustment on the suspension front forks. Uh, not sure what run they are and. Uh, the rear shock hidden in there, adjustable for preload only by the looks of it. But yeah, it's on the firm side, but it's comfortable. In terms of practicality, um, I can't see anywhere to charge your phone, so there's no USB ports or 12 volt sockets. Um, but yeah, this, this isn't a touring bike as such, isn't it? Although you could quite easily tour on it. And to note as well is the um, Front brake is adjustable, front brake lever, but uh, the clutch isn't, which is a bit of a shame. Um, tech wise, so let's have a look at that. Switch on, there's no no lovely switch on sequence, unfortunately. Got a little scroll wheel there. You push it in, and you can change all your settings. So you got display settings, you got lap timer. Oh, that's interesting, taco colour. So quick shifter. So that's gonna be something controlled, isn't it? So you can change your settings on your quick shifter. Shift indicator. Also you can so you can change where you want uh, so you can have a shift indicator on so it flashes when you um when you need to change gear so if you're going for it you can set it to change up to the most efficient revs change your unit change brightness yeah so there's no bluetooth connectivity by the looks of it uh, i'm not really a fan of bluetooth connectivity on bikes And obviously you've got your, your mode button there, which you can change your traction control mode. So you've got one, medium and two. I'm just going to leave it in two, it's been fine. And then you press it again, you've got your mode, which we've covered already. But we're going to leave that in one. Yeah, so that's all your functions, functions of the screen. Um, it, it, I say it looks nice, it's just a little bit on the small side.
Yeah, no, that's fine. What a glorious day. Oh, what a glorious bike. Oh! Oh, blimey! Oh, this is a bumpy ride, and as I said, the suspension is firm, but perfectly controlled. It's, uh, it's bang on, I'd say. I don't think I'd ever feel like I needed to go to suspension. Oh, yeah. So I've found a Street Triple R in the past. Uh, 2013 Bug Eyed model. ABS. So how does uh, how does that compare? How does this compare to that machine? Um well the Street Triple only had a 105 horsepower. I mean, it's fast, but it, you could definitely feel there's more grunt to this. Um, it's a bit of an unfair comparison because I only kept my uh, street triple for about seven months, I think, because I upgraded to it. Well, not upgraded. I just wanted something uh, a bit more touring oriented, so I wouldn't put a Tiger 800. I don't regret getting any Tiger 800, but I do wish I'd have uh, kept that bike for a bit longer. So, yeah, it's a bit of an unfair comparison because it was over winter as well. Mostly. I think I bought it, well, I think I bought it in the July. Well, no, late August. So, didn't really get a chance to properly exploit that bike. It's one of my regrets. So the jury's out, but uh, I think at the minute, as much as I'm a Triumph fanboy, this is the bike I'd rather be on. The brakes were far superior on the East Street Triple. Oh, but this engine, oh, it's. Creamy. Yeah, the brakes are better on the Street Triple, but this engine trumps. Uh, although, let's see the note. There's a the new Street, street Triple is probably on the got the same amount of power, so maybe I need to try one for a fair comparison. Oh. Man, this engine! <laughs> Front wheel came up then. <laughs> oh, you have to hold on to this really tight. Yeah, this is a this is a hooligan. <laughs> so who is this boy came that? Right again, because you got those variable power modes, if you could resist the temptation and leave it in uh, mode 4, it's perfectly suitable for a beginner. But I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't advise going straight to power level 1 if you've not long started riding. Because if you Literally, I'm only about a quarter of a throttle down and it, it pulls like a train. So, yeah, you, you, you have to respect 
the power. In fact, this is this pulls better than I was expecting it to, I'll be honest. So after about an hour and a half, two hours in the saddle, I'm feeling really comfortable. The seat, while it felt firm at first, feels quite supportive now. So I'm a little bit slidey, but not majorly so. And the pressure on the wrists is just right. Just enough so you get a good feel from the front. And not too much, but it's unbearable. Yeah, so... I'm going to hit traffic now, aren't I? What a clutch felt a bit grubby at first. Now, again, I've, I've dialed into it now and... Uh, it's okay. It, uh, just a shame that the clutch lever is not span adjustable for people with shorter fingers. Because, uh, when I'm... I've got long, well, longish fingers and I've just about reached my my fingers over the top. You can afford to be cheeky with your overtakes, you're still safe. Oh, this reminds me of a super moto. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's so playful. Tell you what as well, I do like this colour, that matte black, the only thing is that that's probably going to mark easily, but it does look nice when it's new. Here again. Even in sport mode that fueling is lovely, creamy smooth. Oh, I'm spoiled. <laughs> so, this must be a nice little test. Why we're like at slow speeds and you know, neutral's quite easy to find. If a clunk is to get in the first. Okay, so The floor is lava. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah, that's really nice at low speed, actually. Quite controllable. So, I mean, it does feel like a, it reminds me of a supermoto, to be honest. Look at that. Oh, come on. <laughs> Need to practice that. So this is going to be a good test, filtering. That engine's got a nice grumble, so should be fairly noticeable. Thank you, sir. This is a great, great filtering bike. That just high enough to have a good view over cars without it being intimidating if you have to put your foot down. Okay, 
we're going to left, so I'm going to stay here now. Very noisily. Oh. She's docile when you want her to be. Oh. Why would you use that power? She's angry. You got that uh, little control wheel there so you can go for all your tricks and everything but uh, yeah it's difficult to use of course you're using your throttle hand Just there so so it is now four o'clock I've been on this bike since about half one I feel like I've probably dolled into it now. Got heavy confidence in the chassis. So would I buy one of these myself? Absolutely, it's, it's an absolute hoot. I mean it would be a difficult choice between this and a street triple. But I'd have to try a test ride a modern street triple to, to make that decision. Looks wise a street triple takes it. Probably, um, it would be nice if we could add like a bit more tech as an option, like Bluetooth connectivity. Again, I don't really want that myself, but some people do. Uh, tire pressure monitoring and stuff like that. You can also get this in an SP version, and well, that must be even better. But then again, this is a great bike as standard, so is the SP worth more money? That's it. That's a question for another day. <laughs> yeah, that. Now that it's fitted in, that front brake feels so much better. Yeah, oh yes. Much more stopping power now, are we? <laughs> the biggest problem is accelerating with this bike because <laughs> it just wants to wheelie. Oh. What a naughty bike! This is far more comfortable on dual carriageways than it has any right to be. I'm seriously impressed. Here we go. Yeah, so overall, the only grumbles I've got about this bike is maybe a few of the components look a bit cheap, like the uh, uh, levers, for example. But again, that's being picky. And that uh, the TFD screen is nice, but yeah, just a bit smaller, and some of the stuff is a bit difficult to read. Okay, so moving her about. This is a super light bike. Like you said, I've got a bad right knee and I can manage it just fine. 
when this is slightly uphill as well. If you're not uh, not the strong kind, you won't have any issues with this.